Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and a small 3D exercise in Fusion 360 with a small thing that can throw you off. You can, uh, we can mark it immediately, make it in red. That's the radius up here. Uh, this radius can throw away your model because it has two solutions. We're going to have a look at that when we start modeling. Uh, but let's start talking about how I would do this. Uh, most people would take this drawing and make a full sketch of everything here, trim away things and make it look like the drawing. I will not do that. I will focus on the things I need to put in. First off, we have some radius here that are multiple of. These I will do using the filler tool. It makes this easy, it makes this arc here will be like this. An arc will be like this. Meaning these two inner arcs here, you see they are dimensioned to the outside. These are offset from these two, so I will use the offset tool for creating those. Let's remove some of this and those. Uh, the natural origin point for me is the center of this because we have a key cut out and stuff here. So I will place the origin point here, then I have a dimension to the other center point. I have the two diameters here. So let's start by doing that pop over to Fusion, start, I have not saved my file, I recommend start by saving, I'm gonna create a component, e exercise bracket, very simple, open up so we can see things inside the component, I'm creating a component because this thing here, let's go back and away, might be part of something bigger, part of an assembly, and if we don't put it in components, things get confusing, Try to always put things in the component, makes things much clearer. It's not needed if you do one knockoff, but let's do try to be consistent in what we do. And that's the whole idea with the design floor I have. I want to be able to go back and have a look at the drawing and have a bad look at my design and see how did I do this. This is very basic, but let's get started. Create a sketch. Uh, I'm going to do it from the front because then I go back. I can get the same orientation of this 3D image. It's easier to compare to. So I'm going to create create sketch on this plane. Let's just start with two circles. Circle. Uh, I'm going to use some help here. I'm going to start and just pull out. You see, you get this little help line here. So if I do the circle here, these are going to be horizontal. There's no constraint for now. We're going to do that by doing a line. Do it construction line from here to here and you can see fusion is marking light blue but it will add the horizontal constraint escape to stop the line tool we start adding some dimensions we'll go back to our drawing and have a look we'd have 105 millimeters centered center this is 42 and this is 60 so 60 105 and 42 d on the keyboard this gonna be 60 this was 105 and this here was 42. You're starting to get somewhere. Now we're going to do the two outer arcs. Like back to the drawing. So we're going to create this arc here, the problem arc, and this arc here. So let's go back, create arc. Let's see if we can make fusion fail. This is the easy one. Oh, sorry. I just created, sorry, I'm going to redo that. I was too fast. I'm sorry. Create arc i'm going to do three point arc because tangent arc only works when you start from a line to my knowledge and three point arcs we select the start point end point and then the curvature of the arc so that's the one i'm going to use line type happen to be construction so we're going to turn that off because i want a normal line start somewhere on this circle to somewhere on this circle pull it in the correct direction if you have a look to the right you can see the light blue icon popping up for the tangent constraint so yes i want that so i'm going to stay there Add tangent constraint to this side, and I'm going to dimension this immediately here, and that was supposed to be 60, like that. Then we're going to do our second arc, create arc, and now it can get interesting, so I'm going to make this a bit too far out, and I'm just going to pull it up until we find the tangent constraint, add tangent constraint here. So we have this arc, and as we can see, we are 115, so let's see if we dimension this to... 115. Let's see what Fusion does. It does it correctly this time. Let's see if I can fool it. If we pull this out like this and add the dimension here, 115, you can see it makes a big circle because both these solution, both this, I can make a second object for the fun of this uh, just to show you what sometimes can throw you off. Uh, dimension. I'm going to simply make these two equal. Let's see if 
pops things out. No. So these two are both a radius of 115, but these two are both correct solutions to a radius of a diameter of arc and they are tangent. So sometimes if you make an arc, that's a problem with tangent arc sometimes, Fusion sees two possible uh, solutions. And if it goes wrong, sometimes the best thing is simply to delete the arc and delete this again. And if you have this problem, I recommend do not add the constraints first. You can do once again. This is the way I've noticed is more stable. Start by creating the arc between, doesn't matter where it is really. Get one tangent constraint, not the next one. D for dimension. I'm gonna make this 115. And then I drag it until I get it approx. You see it wants to pop over. I drag it close to where I wanted to have it, and then add the tangent constraint. And in most cases, it places it in the correct place. So that's the thing. Sometimes you have two solutions with the same dimensions, and Fusion will, or most CAD program might jump back and forth. Because we cannot do, you can see the center points are not aligned, so we cannot use that. So that's a bit annoying. So we have made the outer shape, but we have this cut out in the middle. I want that part of the first sketch. These, oh, sorry, I'm going to move that and change my color to some nice, let's do some nice blue things. Or uh, We have an offset here of eight and an offset of eight here. Now the thing we have to look at, at the offset here is in a positive direction from the center of arc. This offset here is from the outside and inwards. That means this dimension here is going to, this off is going to be minus eight and this is going to be eight. I want to make this, because these are the same dimensions, I want to only input the dimension once. So this is how I do it. O on the keyboard for creating a sketch offset. So simply, this line here is going to be 8 millimeters off. You can see the dimension here. I cannot pick up the dimension line, but sometimes I forget that and start the offset tool somewhere here. And oh, I forgot that, so I'm just going to put it 5. I don't care if it's in the wrong direction. I get the, di uh, the dimension here. Double click for dimension, and now remember this needs to be negative. Let's go back and look at image. This needs to be minus because we are moving from uh, the arc towards the center point. So this here is going to be minus, and then I can pick up this dimension. And like that, we have this driven by this. The good thing, of course, if we change this to 7 or something else, they will follow along. So offsets on arc and circles are basically always the positive numbers are outwards making it larger and negative is inwards quite logical so we have some lines over shooting here but i don't care about that this is a sketch not a drawing so i'm going to finish sketch and go over to look at our drawing we have two thicknesses here we have 20 here and we have 10 here so let's do that we're going to start with e on the keyboard for extrude this here and these two the two circular profiles uh, we don't do it symmetric because it's, it's the same. Let's back and look at a picture. We can see this is symmetric around the center line. So we try to use that in Fusion. The whole length is 20. I'm going to finish that. Uh, our, by mistake, I have changed the way I have visibility. So we're going to do that visual style. Shade it over to shade it with visibility, visible edges only. That's the one I prefer. You can see my sketch did not hide. Let's open up. The sketch is fully defined. I have two bodies, no problem. The sketch need an auto hide because I've turned that off in my preferences. So I can now reuse the sketch. E once again. And now I simply select the two arc parts here. One side, symmetric. Whole length is going to be 10. That's in the drawing. And join. And OK. And from that, we are back to one body and the sketch is still there, so I'm going to hide the sketch slightly now. So, we have made like the outer part of it, so now let's keep on doing the two cutouts, or the two holes here. So I'm just going to remove things here, so we can have a bit cleaner look. So the, the part we're interested in now is this here and this here. And let's start with the circles. We have a dimension 33 and 20. No, sorry. 30 and 20, 33 years for the keyhole. So let's do that. We are going to create a sketch. Now, I do not want to create the sketch on the face here. If I by mistake happen to remove a face or do something straight. So I hold down the mouse button. Sorry. I hate when Fusion does that. Something just selects. I want to create a sketch. 
and I hold down the mouse button. Let's do that the other way around. Turn on our region. Um, very important here, I turn on the region within the component, hold down the mouse button until I find the plane I want, accept plane, and then I do create sketch. Uh, I can now hide the body, turn on my earlier sketch, and simply do P for project because I want this center point over here too. I can now hide the first sketch, turn on the sketch I'm working in, and I have a center point over here. So we're going to do two circles. going to hide the origin now. Circle. Circle. Let's go back because I forgot the number I'm playing around here. This was 20 and this was 30. So dimension. This was 30. And this was 20. So that's our basic holes. Now we need the key cut out. And there are a couple of different ways to do this. This is my preferred way of doing it. Create some extra geometry, but it's clean and easy. We need a rectangle, of course. That's the way the key lo how it looks. So I'm going to make a rectangle like this. Use the midpoint constraint to the bottom of the base of a rectangle and the center point of a circle. Now D for dimensions. Go back and have a look. It's 8 millimeter here. It's 33 millimeter from the tangent point on the other side of a circle. So let's do that. That is 8. And it's from here, dimension from here, right click, select, uh, pick circle angent and the other side of here, like that. And that was 33 millimeters. Uh, now I could use trim and other stuff to remove things. One thing I can do, I can simply make this line here a construction line and I only have two profiles to select. So I'm pleased with that. I'm going to finish sketch. I'm going to do an extrude of this profile, this profile, and this profile. Turn on my body. I remember the width. I could have put that in a parameter, of course. The full width was 20 millimeters. If you want to be a bit safe, you can overdo it. You can do distance to object, but that sometimes gets a bit confusing and things move around. So I'm going to do 20 now. Hit OK. Wait for Fusion to think for a while. So we have made our main things, our main body, and the two holes. The things we are left are the fillets, F for fillet. So let's see, we have the 8 millimeters here and 2 millimeters. It's going to be 4 8 millimeters and 8 of 2 millimeters. Uh, there is also possible, of course, I could make half of this body and it only do 4 fillets and then mirror. That's how it's easier for you to think. But let's start with these here. Find the edges. Can, of course, only do yeah, mirror is a good tool sometimes. Uh, four, and then going to be eight. I'm going to do plus because I'm going to add selections. going to select uh, the edges here. Like this. And if I'm done this correctly, let's have a look. We have eight edges, and they were supposed to be two millimeters. And I hit OK. And by doing that, we should have something that very much resembles the image up here. In a couple different steps. And I have clear sketches. The lines are a bit outside of things. If you hide the body, you can see this here. But I like it because there's quite a lot of information in this here. Let me move this color here. So it's a bit too much to place in one sketch for me because it gets too much numbers. Then I prefer to split it into sketches. So I like have the outer shape and then I have the cutouts of the holes or whatever I want to make later. So that's how I would create this part. Let's bring it back in Fusion 360. Hope you found something interesting and useful here. With that said, take care, see you around and goodbye.